guys, welcome back to Crafting with Kelly. This is our ongoing pop-up book workshop and today we're gonna work on lesson two, flaps. So if you were at lesson one, you know we did talking mouths and here is the talking mouth I did from last time, the frog. And here's the second one, which I haven't quite completed because I have an idea for this. So this was a basket rather than a mouth. So today we're gonna do flaps and let's start with a book. So our, we'll just read a book first and we'll go from there. So our first, today's book is called Lost and there's a skunk on the cover. Lost by Kelly Lynn. Tristan Skunk was busily browsing in the forest for grubs one fine summer day. He had just found a particularly delicious specimen when he realized that he was all alone. And if you can tell, this is, this is a flap. This is what we're gonna work on today. Tristan set off to find his family. First, he climbed a tree and asked Owl, have you seen my family? Skunks don't live in trees, Owl hooted. Try the meadow. And there's the talking mouth from this particular book. Next, he scampered into the meadow and asked Rabbit, have you seen my family? Skunks don't live in Warrens, Rabbit said. Try the woods. Tristan ran through the meadow to the woods where he found Deer. Have you seen my family? He asked. Nope, said Deer. Try the swamp. It took a long time to get to the swamp, but Tristan finally reached it. He asked Frog, have you seen my family? Frog croaked, oops. And here's Frog, jumps up and down a little bit. Frog croaked loudly, skunks don't live in swamps. Why don't you go home and look there? Tristan ran back through the swamp and the meadow and the woods to his own hollow log in the forest. Inside the hollow log, he found his family. And that's the end. Now, there's the author. So today's lesson is flaps, and there are actually two flaps in this book. There's the first flap on the first page, which is the bush that hides the main character. So it's just a tree and it flaps down. And then there's a fancy flap at the back. The hollow log is a flap. And then this pile of brush is also a flap. And there's, it's underneath one flap. One flap under another. So let's just do a couple more flaps so you can see. I'll use the ones that we did, that we read last week. So in the baby blues, this is just like a blanket and it's hiding the baby. And this one also has two. There's the pile of presents. It's also hiding checkers in the baby. On the something very strange, we had a double flap because the two pumpkins are flaps and they're hiding jack-o'-lanterns. Some samples of flaps from, from um, classes, but I don't have that many because people generally tend to use the flaps that they make. So this one actually, I'm not sure what that was about. It says, I hate you. And when you open it up, there's a duck floating in a pond and it's got a little happy face underneath. And here's one where it's words actually. It says, knock, knock. And the flap says, who's there? And then you open the book. Um, that one wouldn't work quite that way, but it's, um, in a book, but that's um, one way to do it. Here's another one. Here's a completed field. And then under this rock, there's a little creature. So a flap hides something. Um, so a lot of pop-up books are just flap books. All of the spot books are just flaps because if you're spot and then you look in each thing, you can kind of see the edge of spot but he's hiding behind something and then you open it up and it's the full picture. Um, this is a book of pop-ups, 
which is actually a fairly pretty cool book called Pop, Papa Mania. And it shows you like a flap can be the top of a tree. It's hiding a snake. Um, this is a, let's see, I'm only gonna show you the ones that are actual flaps on these. Here's a flap that's, um, it's just got words underneath. And a flap can be any size. There's a, just a picture and there's a mouse with some cheese underneath. So flap hides something, it can be words, it can be a picture, it can be just something that you want to be a surprise. In this particular book, it's just hiding one character. One character is hiding behind another. Um, and again, here's another one where it's a tree and it's hiding the top of an animal, but you can kind of tell what that animal is gonna be. The surprise is the word that's there. Um, this one is this one's one with words. So this one has hooray on one side, and there's a picture. This has a blanket on this side, and there's you know, just as a, an example of another kind of flap. This flap. It does work with the fold in the middle of the page, and this one is colored on both sides. So it's part of the story on the first page, and then it's also a part of the story on the second page, even though it's like one. And there's also, a door is a great way to do a flap. So there's a door on one side, you open it, and there's something there. So those are just two more examples. So for flaps, you need the same things you do for um, all of our pop-up techniques. You need blank white index cards, five by eight. You need markers. Nice markers are good. Like I said, pen towel is good. You will need a black um, felt tip marker for your outlining, a pencil, and a good eraser. And your imagination. You also, for this, for flaps, you need just glue. Um, we don't necessarily need to back this particular card because the flap is actually backed up by the picture that you drew. Okay, so the easiest thing to, way to remember that a flap has to be, it can't go across the middle of a page, is to fold your page you're going to do today. And then this is not the one you're gonna to do today, but you're going to use it. So you have a card, you fold it in half, and then you're gonna rip it apart. Now this is, the, this is the largest your flap can be. Because the other thing you have to remember is that when you close your book, you don't want it sticking out. So this one could go this way or that way, but it won't be. So maybe even do it twice. So you have, a flap can be as, as small or as large as you want, but it has to fit inside the book. And it can't go across the fold, and it can't stick out beyond the page. So, what you're gonna do today is have your page that you've made, and actually I use two different colored papers, I don't know if you can tell, but one is white and one is cream. So I'm trying to make sure that the pages are all the same color for my book. So here's, let's do a quick flap just to do something. And I'm just gonna make this big. Um, so, and although I have told you not to draw dark, just so that we can do some flap ideas, I'm gonna do this one dark. So here is, I don't know, I guess it's a cow. And he's looking at something, and maybe we want it to be our frog. Because remember, we had the frog in the bird bath, but he's not in the bird bath anymore. He's just kind of sitting on a trail. So here is a quick, very quick drawing of a frog and a cow. And we want to hide the frog because the cow is going to come across it very suddenly. So this 
card is big enough so that it will cover the frog's face. And let's say we wanna just draw, I don't know, what could a frog be hiding behind? We'll just do a big flower. Okay, so there is our flower. There's our, our cow and the frog is gonna be a surprise behind the flower. Now, you may have noticed that there's no folds and every pop-up technique has to have a fold. That's an, a good thing to remember. So the fold in this case is not the fold in the middle of the book, but it's gonna be the hinge where you stick down the pop-up. So it needs to have a fold so that when you glue it down, there's something that folds in the book. Now, have you noticed that maybe this will not work as well as we think, because if we need to see the frog's feet, it won't cover them completely. So sometimes the flap is the last thing you draw, but it might be the first thing you design because you know that you want to hide something behind it. You could also just have this be, um, the cow is walking down the road and this could be a completely different. So here's our fold. And you might do the fold after you decide what you're gonna do. So, so the frog is, the cow is walking down the road and he hears ribbit and he looks behind and there's a frog. So this is the, the pop-up flap could either go from the top, it could go from the bottom, and it could go from the side, although I'm not sure that will work with this size of a card. You might have to cut it slightly differently. And you might wanna make sure that your fold is at an even angle so that it works better, but it's up to you. So this one could be a side fold. And although I said you can't use, it can't go across the middle, there's one exception, and that is when part of your fold is on one side and the other side is on the page that you're hiding something from. If you notice with that skunk book though, Tristan Skunk, when I made that into a book, that it stayed on one side when you opened the book. So sometimes that's not the best place to do it because it automatically opens so that it would open like this, if that makes sense. So you would see your character. That's what kind of happened with the log. So, so what you need to do is figure out if your main character from your first page, say it's the frog, is the character that's gonna go through the book. It could also be the rabbit I drew or it could be something completely different. You need to start thinking about your story with the flap. Flaps are very easy, and sometimes there's more than one in a book. In fact, most of my books have either one or two because I go back and, and um, even though we've learned one technique, one technique per video or per week, you can use those multiple times in your book. So just like the spot books are you know, spot went walking, what did you see? And then there's like a, a door um, and behind the door, there's a cat. And then he goes into a garden and behind the garden, there's a bee. Um, he, he hears something in a tree, he, he looks in the tree and there's a woodpecker. So some books are just like a series of characters hiding behind flaps. Some things, some books, it's just like one page. Um, you could do like a knock-knock joke. You could do a question and answer. Flaps can be doors. They can be bushes. They can be um, clouds. They can be anything really, and they can just fit in your book. So I'm going to let you think of a couple things. Um, I will start working. I guess I'll use this page since I drew it. So now that I've got this, 
and I have an idea. Do you think I should do the flower? Or do you think I should do the word ribbit, wherever that went in my pile of paper here? Or I could do something else. I think I will think about it. You start drawing and then we're gonna come back together and, um, oh, there's ribbit and have the preliminary plan. Now, usually this is this lesson is when your book starts coming together because you've thought about your character, now you're thinking about your story. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the same thing, but you can do two pages with the same character, you can do two completely different um, characters, and then we can put them together with the next lesson, which we will get into later. But. I want you to draw something and think about your flap and I am going to go and outline these in black and start coloring in and we'll come back when that is done. Um, I do have another suggestion. If you are having a hard time thinking about your background and your characters, the Ed Emberley's Complete Fun Print Drawing Book or any of Ed Emberley's books are really good places to get ideas. And I think he has a website you can look at, but it gives you ideas um, of easy characters. Like if you see, these are all thumbprints. And if you wanted to do a person, you could think of some of the things that person needs. And then he also does worlds. So um, here's an easy frog. So it's a good place to get ideas for illustrations um, in a world. He does also, like here's fire engines. This is the big red drawing book, um, birds. So if you take one of these books, this is the drawing book of animals. So you can get ideas how to draw a simple animal. Like this is a great pig and it's something you could do from page to page. Um, he's got a green drawing book, which has green things. So he has a whole series. There's purple, red, blue, um, green, I think there's a yellow and an orange, and then there's a make a world one too. Um, so they're good, a good place to start if you're looking for ideas for how to draw a character, if you're not um, coming up with something on your own. So let's stop here. I will color and get back to you and we'll talk a little bit more about flaps. So. All right, so here's my outline. I haven't decided what to do with the cow's bottom yet because I'm not quite sure. Now, remember last week we talked about when we're coloring, I want to make sure that the frog stays kind of the same from picture to picture. So I need to find markers 111 and 134 to make sure that he stays the same color. And then we're going to color. And I just had an idea when I was looking at my picture. Remember last week we talked about this little butterfly down here? I think what I'm going to do is draw a butterfly to be my flap, which will be fun. Oh, well, I'm done with my picture and I have the frog and I have the monkey looking cow <laughs> and I want to hide the frog. Now we have ribbit. Oops. So I could just make the word ribbit and have that come up not so exciting. I could just cut out this flower and hide him behind the flower. Or I had an idea when I was looking at my page. Remember I was talking about the butterfly? So I think I'm going to draw that butterfly and that's what the frog is going to be behind. So here's a half a page. I don't want to use the whole thing, but maybe not half of the half either. Like maybe about this much. So you can either cut it or hold it. You can either tear it or you can cut it. At this point, it's pretty close to where I'm going to put it. So I'm going to cut. So this is the piece of paper I have. And I want to make sure that there's something. So I think I'm going to have it fold up. So I'm going to just want to make sure that the frog shows completely. So this might take some trial and error. So I folded it about a half an inch and that would work for hiding the frog. If I put it down like this, so the frog would be hidden. It actually could be a little bit smaller than that. So 
it could be right over the frog, which means there's a little bit too much here. So I think I will just trim, well, I'll trim a little bit more off. So it ended up being more of a square. So I wanna put the butterfly over that. And now I'm just going to draw a butterfly. Draw a butterfly. I don't wanna draw the butterfly on the flap, the, the fold here where it bends up. So you wanna put the butterfly on this part. So let's see, just draw your butterfly lightly. And when you're happy with it, so here's a butterfly, it's a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna, while you think about what your flap is going to be, I'm going to decorate the butterfly. So again, we need the black marker because you're gonna outline the edges that you just drew. And then you're going to color them. So here's my butterfly and the next step, and he doesn't go above the fold. He doesn't go under the fold either. So now we're just gonna color the butterfly. So here's my butterfly and I think he will fit, but do you notice something wrong with this picture? There's no background on the butterfly. The background of my page, I colored with blue pencil. So I'm just going to make sure that the part that's going to be glued down is the same color. And since the butterfly, I'm gonna cut out the wings here, but I'm not gonna cut out around his face because that I want that to be part of what's sticking down kind of. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that the blue goes wherever I think it might stay on the page so that it fits in. So since there's a blue background, and if you color it and then you cut it out, that's okay. So here's what I mean. So the background of the page, the sky is this blue color. So I just use the same blue color to color the flap and to color a little bit around the top of the butterfly, you can see but I'm not gonna leave it just a square because I think that this could make, it could be more interesting if the butterfly actually kind of came off the page. So I am just gonna cut out my butterfly. And it's okay if there's a little bit of white around it because you probably won't really notice that. And I'll show you, again, I'll show you what I mean. So I kind of did it like this. And we're gonna see if that works. So see, I cut out just the bottom part. And if we glue the butterfly here, so this is what I'm gonna do, it covers the frog completely. So, oh, but it's a little bit, Got to move him up a little bit. So his legs show a little bit, but maybe that's okay. I think it will be. So I'm just gonna glue this flap down. And the other thing that's nice is if you did make a mistake in your flap and you decide that you're not gonna use it, you're gonna go back and use like the, the flower or the ribbit or something, keep this, front, this piece that you've done because you've already got a piece for your story if you need it. So just put it in the envelope if you don't wanna use something and it could come up later in one of the other techniques that you might want to use it. So right now we're just going to glue this down. And again, I forgot my glue stick. So I'm going to use the rubber cement. Just put, now if you had a glue stick, you would just put glue just on the flap like this. Flap it a little bit because rubber cement. And let's see, I'll make sure that that works. It actually is kind of funny because it looks like, once I glue it down, it looks like the frog has, or the butterfly has legs. And when we eventually get to the story part, I could have words right here, or I could just have it be blank. Sometimes you can color the other side if you want, if it works for the story, and sometimes you don't need to. 
Um, but here we go. So now we have two pages of a story. It's starting to come together a little bit. So here's our main character who's walking along and there's a butterfly flying by him. And here's the next page, the same butterfly, the same character, and something is happening. So we have to think about that story. We haven't used the rabbit with the basket of flowers, but that might come in later. So that's another reason to keep all the pages you do because you might be able to work it into your story. Now that you've started thinking about your story, you might wanna take another card because of course you have a lot of them and think about some of the elements of your story that you wanna make sure. So I'm gonna say frog, butterfly, cow, so we have these three characters right now. Do we know what they're doing yet? No, maybe we'll find out in the next story. So I'm going to leave you there. So keep all your pages that you've done, put them in your envelope. Here's my envelope. I'm gonna put those in. I'm also going to keep the flower in the rivet because it was an idea and I might wanna use it later. And if you have pieces of the, the pages that you that are still pretty um, intact, like throw the, the trim off, but are out, but you might keep those pages, those pieces just because you might use it. So we'll put those down and I will read you one more story and then that would be it. So here's one and you can see if you can find, oh, we already kind of did this one, but We'll do the flaps on this one and look for the flaps for the techniques that we've already learned. So this one is called Ordinary Odie, but <laughs> the title fell off. <laughs> so here's the title page, Ordinary Odie by Kelly Wood. Odie was a very ordinary donkey. More than anything, he wanted his boring coat to be bold and bright, colorful and patterned like a giraffe. And see, that's kind of, it could be a donkey, but you find out it's a giraffe because it's hidden underneath. One day, Odie journeyed to the jungle where he met Da, who was everything he wanted to be. I want to look like you, said Odie. And see, there's Da, Da's the giraffe, and there's Odie. Da smiled and called in Mama Luigi the jungle beautician who parachuted in from her private jet. Sometimes stories can get crazy too. <laughs> he wants to look like me, Da told Mama Luigi. Just like you, Mama asked, but you look like you. Everyone should find their own beauty. She turned to Odie. Do you really want to look like something you're not? And here is Odie behind Mama Luigi. Odie thought hard. And then, look, she made him a flower wreath. Magnificent, declared Mama Luigi. Beautiful, cheered Da. Odie looked down with pride at his new look. It's me, he said, bold and bright, colorful and original. And that's, oops, this book's come apart a little bit and that's the end. So, so that was the two flaps were um, hiding something that was a surprise. And that's what you wanna remember about flaps. It's a surprise and you're trying to distract the reader a little bit with where you think the story's going. So that's been lesson number two, flaps. And lesson number three, we're gonna do bump outs. So I'll see you next time for bump outs and in the meantime, keep practicing your techniques. Again, flaps can be used as a card if you wanted to do that. It doesn't have to be part of the book. It does make a fun page of a book, but you can do knock-knock jokes. You could do um, math equations. <laughs> you could do pretty much anything as well as pictures. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson and we will see you next time. <laughs>